Um, the last thing we will look at is the three impacts of human activity uh, on the water cycle. So now we start to get this human uh, dynamic involved with affecting our water cycle. We know the water cycles, we know what it's been doing for a long time, and I'm sure you've heard a lot about how the water moves through that cycle. Uh, but here are the three big influences. We'll look at deforestation, urbanization, and agriculture very briefly. So I'll speed through these things. First, deforestation. Here we have a beautiful forest being built um, versus a place that has been chopped down right next door. Uh, you get the rain falling on this nice, happy, healthy rainforest or forest in general. And what's the difference? We can start to actually see and imagine what's going to take place. Well, in the trees over here, uh, there's a lot of protection. That water from the rain is not going to slam into the earth with as much force, especially during a torrential tropical rainstorm. So there's protection, uh, infiltration. You have roots down there that can help to absorb and actually suck up some of that water at the same time. And you have a thick layer of, of litter, of leaves, um, and that will actually slow down that water moving down into the water table below and even keeps, keep the soil moist for a longer amount of time, better for the trees. Versus uh, if you chop those trees down, you're going to have a lot of runoff. The water will hit and move away very quickly. And then it, it, while it's doing that, it's pulling away a lot of that valuable topsoil with a lot of the nutrient needed for new seeds to develop. Um, this adds a lot of uh, mud essentially into the rivers. So river sediment goes up, which wipes out biodiversity because a lot of those species of, of fish uh, and river organisms all of a sudden have a cloudy environment. They can't survive. They can't find their food uh, as easily. So we're talking about biodiversity dropping in the rivers and on land as well. Pretty obvious, uh, pretty obvious implications when we talk about deforestation. So have a look at this, take two seconds to try to answer this question. Is this positive or negative feedback? For example, a drier climate leads to less rainfall, leads to uh, reduced vegetation, leads to less evaporation, which leads to a drier climate, which leads to less rainfall, et cetera, et cetera. Positive or negative feedback? What do you think? Sounds weird to say, but it's a positive feedback because as one goes up, the other implication goes up. And as one uh, variable goes up, the next variable goes up and goes up and goes up. And you end up with a line like this. If we were to graph, if we were to graph it, the line would consistently increase. So that's positive. It would go in a positive direction. Uh, negative feedback loops always come back on themselves. My, my temperature, if I get very hot, I sweat, that pulls some of my heat away from my body, and then I get cold. If I get too cold, I shiver and I go in the opposite, the negative of that direction. And then I get I shiver and I get warmer. And then I get warm and I come back, a negative of that direction. So negative feedback loop will take this pattern group. And we'll spend some time talking about that in another class. Uh, another implication of humans getting involved in this uh, system, the hydrologic cycle, urbanization, and there's some things to think about here on the uh, lower right of the screen. Um, do we get more percolation or less percolation? Um, that's water movement through the, through the soil. Uh, more runoff or less runoff in each case. More flooding or less flooding. Um, and more or less pollution when you have an urban environment. So when you have those environments, when you have those environments, you, um, you have a lot of changes to those places. So now here's some examples. I don't know if I can flip through this screen of images where that is actually taking place. So here we go. We're going to shoot some water out into the oceans because of urbanization. And you can actually visually see that taking place here. Um, more of quite visual implications of that here. Uh, anywhere you go, you can find lots of satellite images of urbanization and runoff. Google it and you will find it all over the place. Um, this was going to be a task I'd leave to you. I'll put a lot of examples up. List three ways to develop uh, sustainable drainage into urban uh, areas. And here's a lot of examples. So what I would do is I would pause at this point, pick three of these that are of interest or 
brand new to you and try to see um, how we're using some of these um, and how we can actually make better city plans by using some of these tips on the side, some of these ideas um, to actually improve our situation. And these are going into places uh, all over the world. So have a look at that. There's a video I'll link right here that's quite phenomenal in terms of some of the, some of the progress that's being made here. And the last one, agriculture. Um, in this graph, we see that beef is the highest by far when we talk about the average uh, water consumption per product, how much water we need to actually raise this, this food item for the grocery store. Um, wheat is, is right up there as well. So let's have a quick peek at an example of how our water consumption is being affected by these different uh, types of agriculture. All right, so here we have uh, a pretty high-tech drawing, thank you very much, uh, showing a few different things that we're adding to the environment through agriculture. We have pesticides, fertilizers, um, and animal wastes, like cows and all these types of things that we put in our farms out there. Um, so one of the things that you can see in this, in this image is uh, the big river, slowly but surely we're using a lot of that water and it's trickling down to not much down here at the bottom. Um, if, if we talk about the Colorado River, for example, there is actually very little or no water actually coming out of the Colorado River, uh, yet it starts as a giant dominating river in the United States. And all that water is actually being used uh, for the most part agriculture and to be used, sent off to uh, a lot of farms in, in California actually. So. Let's look at some of these uh, implications here and some of the, the improvements to be made. Uh, these are things that are being done at the small scale villages in the middle of East Africa to at the large scale uh, mass produced farms in, in China. So we can look at um, ways to reduce water. Drip irrigation is a huge, huge water saver. Um, crop rotation because you, you don't want to pull out all the nutrient out of the soil and damage your soil so you want the soil to be able to hold as much water as possible um, and terracing which is what we what we see when we see rice farms um, and those beautiful pictures of layered farms so water can actually trickle down and be stored and trickle down and be stored in areas um, ideas for re reducing pollution from uh, farms is the obvious, don't spray when it's raining, right? That makes sense. If it's raining, it's just gonna wash it away, but you'd be surprised how often that happens in the world. Um, reusing animal waste, there's a ton of nutrient in the animal waste in this picture of the tractor in the background, that's what they're doing. They're scattering um, cow manure into a field, and I guarantee the tomatoes or whatever they're gonna grow here will be very tasty after this. Um, and using natural predators, ladybugs actually are phenomenal at eating aphids off of uh, plants. So you don't have to spray the plants, you have some ladybugs that will take care of that. Some images of um, pesticides going into our fields have quite detrimental effects for things like bees, which are our essential pollinator for all the fruits out there that we have. Um, any flowering plant, we need bees and other pollinators to help us out with it. But bees are the big player. Um, agriculture runoff is a big issue as well, again, that we just referred to. We lose a lot of that, uh, those nitrates into um, the water systems here, and you can see that happening here. And that runoff also from cattle farms heads off into the ocean, uh, into the waterways, and it can really lead to a lot of damaging effects, including eutrophication, which we'll talk about later. This is interesting. This is taking place in the States and it's a monitoring station. Um, and we can see the runoff moving through the system um, and everything is being measured in this uh, field. Everything that's running off is being measured. And this helps the farmer actually know exactly how much pesticides and, and sprays they're using and is all how much of it's actually being wasted and going off into the water. So they can actually reduce their spending and, and be a lot more efficient with what they're spraying and help the environment at the same time. 
So we'll close here. Here's the checklist from our textbook in terms of did we cover these things and how well did we cover them. Have a visit. If there's any confusions, leave a comment in the uh, comments below or let me know. And uh, yeah, we'll talk more about chapter 4.2 coming pretty soon. Thanks.